Angela Stuber, representing grassroots.org, uh, CTCNet, and the Ohio Community Computing Network. Uh, today I am in beautiful San Diego and uh, attending the Commons Workshop discussing community and municipal broadband. So uh, you were one of the, the lead people in the formation of the Ohio Community Computing Network. Um, so your knowledge may be a little bit specialized, but could you tell me how technology is integrated in your life now? Technology is a huge part of my life, and I in no way claim to be a technology uh, specialist or a techie, but I am uh, a technology advocate. Uh, I understand the importance of technology in individuals' day-to-day -day lives. I understand that uh, both a consumer and a nonprofit and a business person all use technology every day that if one uses it um, to its optimum availability then it can transform the way we, we do business and it has done that in fact it has done that in my life and I know nonprofits and individuals that it has done that in their lives and it is very much changing things are now available on the internet that before one either did on paper or one did on one's PC and now those things are available on the internet so that you don't have to keep them on your computer anymore you now do it across the internet and if if organizations like mine can help an or a nonprofit to figure out how to do that it can save them resources which is tremendous in the life of a nonprofit a lot of cities are deploying uh, communication networks either wireless or fiber um, what was the potential that this unleashes for a community? The potential for the fiber or the wireless is that there is more broadband or more internet access available. In an urban area, it's an issue of affordability. And in a rural area, it's simply an issue of access because it wasn't there before. And in fact, in some urban areas, there are pockets where there are no access. Um, but we need to be careful that just because there is access, it doesn't know necessarily mean that people know how to use that access. So when we provide this access, we get all excited that access is available. But we need to make sure that when we provide the access that we hand in hand put that with training because we need to make sure that folks know how to use this amazing, great resource that's out there. Because if we don't, then this digital divide that in fact exists will become greater and greater, and we definitely don't want to do that. Um, it's the same issue as what happened years ago with putting a bunch of computers in schools. It's a great idea, put, put computers in schools. Um, oh wait, we didn't tell the teachers how to use the computers. <laughs> oh, golly, that might have been a good idea. So it's, it's the same thing. So nonprofits would be a special area where it's not just like get your staff trained on certain things, but integrating technology. So what does grassroots.org do? Grassroots.org. Uh, right now we are providing uh, web hosting for nonprofits for free, but we are also um, matching up volunteers to design the websites, and we are providing the first year of domain registration for free. Uh, those are things that we have happening right now. But what's in works, and I'm very excited about, are these online applications, this toolbox that we are creating. Because there are so many nonprofits that don't have IT staff, they don't have servers, they don't have the, cap the capacity that a larger nonprofit or a business would have. So what we are doing is setting all that up for them, and then they can access these applications um, that everybody else already has access to. So if they can access these things, they will be more efficient. and and we understand that we can't just throw these tools out there. It's the same thing as throwing computers at somebody, right? That we need to provide the support and the service to assist them in using these tools. Uh, and we also need to convince them that they can do it, that it's not beyond them. So there's a, there's a layer of marketing involved. So as we do it, we need to do it smartly. Um, and just the same way, it's, 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 all, it's all the same issue as providing the wireless and the broadband in the communities. It needs to be done in a smart kind of way. That the services are awesome, but you can't just throw it out at people. That it needs to be done um, by thinking it through, because the training is so important. So what, is, uh, what is the potential for change for an organization that, that starts to take technology seriously as a nonprofit? 
the potential for change? That's, a, that's an amazing question. Um, because then they can go from doing, simply providing their services and getting by to providing more services and, be, and being more efficient. Uh, so imagine an organization who is serving 100 individuals and they're doing things such as emailing documents back and forth and um, keeping their books uh, in an Excel spreadsheet. And so then we teach them uh, how to keep their books more efficiently and we show them uh, how to keep their documents in a central location on the internet and um, then all of a sudden it doesn't become an issue of, hey, who has the last version of the bylaws? <laughs> I thought John had it. No, I think Sue has it. Because then you know who has it. It's, it's on the internet. You know exactly where, you, where it is. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a time saver is what it is. If we could close with a big vision for the, for the nation or the world in terms of what technology can do for us, but the attitude we may need to take towards technology for that to happen, mm -hmm. what would you say? Uh, smarter, smarter, smarter. <laughs> that technology is this amazing tool, but we can't just throw it at people. That we need to plan it out. Um, so the big vision is that technology is this great tool, but we need to, to look at it very carefully. Um, and so I'm very excited about what technology can do, but I also think we need to look at it very, um, very carefully that we don't just rush at it. And um, at the same time, I get very excited because the potential is immense. It's, it's, completely, it's completely open and who knows what's around that next corner because none of us were able to predict what was around the corner yesterday. I'm gonna break my rule and ask one more question. Okay. Uh, um, would you relate technology to communications policy? Uh, technology to communications policy, yes, absolutely. Um, communications policy today, uh, <laughs> there are policies today that are not conducive to a strong um, usage of technology. And um, it has to do with media awareness and media usage. So I would very much say that technology advocates like myself um, sh need to be aware of communications policy and even though our lives are busy that as much as we can get involved that we speak up when possible um, even though it's not our primary focus because it does impact our day-to-day -day lives as it does all other citizens. Thank you. Thank you Michael.